says it's preparing to live stream, setting up your meeting for Facebook Live. This is usually I've on. Never, I've never even done a live stream, I don't think. Well, hey, now you can add this to your resume. <laughs> Oh, this is on there, I'm pretty sure. And um, uh, like I said, on Tuesday, it started this weird echo. So if it does that, I'll make sure and close my Facebook. But so I'm Mandy and I'm with COVID Recovery Iowa. And today I have with me Caitlin uh, from the Ames High School District. And she's going to talk to us a little bit about mental health in the public schools. And just to give you a little bit of background, COVID Recovery Iowa is um, here to supplement existing resources to help people with their emotional well-being here um, um, as the pandemic continues on and um, post derecho as well. So we are here for that emotional support. And I'm excited to hear about what Caitlin um, pulled off on Friday, a mm -hmm. mental health conference in Ames High. And we got to be a part of that, which was really cool. Um, but a lot of other people did too. And then she's going to tell us a little bit about just mental health in the public schools and some trends she's been seeing. And go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, you're a family and student advocate, right? Student and family advocate, yes. Which is a fancy word for, fancy, fancy phrase for social worker. Okay, all right. So yeah. with, with Ames High. And so, so go ahead and let's start off with trends, if that sounds okay. What, what yeah. are you seen in the public school system there in Ames um, as far as mental health needs throughout the last year? Yeah, so we obviously saw a lot of, like because of the isolation that students were having, a lot of um, severe depression, students going into severe depression and suicidal ideations, which led our some of our students to um, the emergency room at the hospital and possibly placement. Um, and then one of the other, and that was, that was primarily most of the issue, the isolation that the students had not being able to spend time with friends, not being able to go to the mall and hang out, you know, do what they do. Um, the other, other, probably most solid trend we had was um, the more active students, um, the students that uh, are in student council or do sports or, um, you know, other clubs in the community, volunteer in the community. Um, those students who typically find their success by being engaged and involved in activities were becoming severely depressed because they didn't have those things that kind of fill their cup the entire way up. Um, and so, yeah, most, a lot of our more successful students that we usually don't see or don't have issues with, we're really seeking some support when we came back in the fall. So an increased need for those that sometimes struggle anyway, and an mm -hmm. increased need for those that tend not to struggle. Is that pretty Yes. Nice? Yeah, so in general, a much higher need of, of students. So typically, um, when I work with students, I have about 15 tier three students that I work with. And this year I have about right now, I think I have like 24. And then our tier two um, student family advocate, she has about 70 students on her roster. I don't I'm not familiar with the tier part. Can you explain mm -hmm. that a little bit? Yep. So tier tier three students are the highest risk um, students that we have. So they need the most um, high level, highest level of intervention. So they get a lot of one on one support. And then the tier two kids um, get a little bit of that one on one support, but more like group support. So they do a lot of like group sessions and, um, you know, kind of trying to figure things out on their own, but also like having that support person in place. You have a lot of students. How many students do you have at Ames High? Oh gosh, I think there's 1,300 and I think about 300 of them are enrolled remotely right now. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think that's about what we're at. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, how about, well, I just think that's a really important thing to point out in that when we had a decrease in activities, um, not only did it, was it just like a real bummer, um, people look forward to, you know, being involved in, in those activities and those events, um, mm -hmm. but that, that served a purpose and their, their purpose, their life purpose was taken away in some ways yeah. for some of those students. 
Yep. We had seniors miss their track season. We had seniors missing prom. We had almost didn't have a graduation ceremony. Our graduation ceremony got uh, postponed two or three different times. Um, so yeah, we had a lot of, I, I think specifically the seniors missed out on a lot last year. You know, the end of the year is a blast for seniors. They get to do their, you know, senior pranks and all those things. And, and they didn't get any of those things. It got, it literally got ripped out from underneath them. And I think it's important to point out that there's a purpose for those events that um, yep. they're helping close out a huge chapter in their life. Yes. So yes. Move on to something else successfully. Right. Yep. Huge milestones for them that they missed. Yeah. And so even your graduation um, that you did have, I'm guessing looked a little different. I know. Yeah, it was, it was out in the, um, out in the stadium and I, I didn't go to the ceremony, um, but I saw pictures and the kids were seated, seated, sat, um, you know, six feet apart and you could only have so many um, people there to watch you. I think it was two tickets per student. Um, and it was in, I mean, I think it was in June or July and they graduated in May. So um, it was, you know, about a month or two after graduation. So yeah, it looked a lot different than I think the normal graduation that we have. Yeah. And I don't know, I mean, I don't know this one, the, the one we have this year might look that way too. I mean, I don't know what their plans are in regards to, you know, COVID expectations. I don't know what they'll do. So sometimes it feels like, we're really doing a lot of things similar to what we used to do. Um, and then sometimes it, it hits you that no, mm -hmm. we still have to not be in gigantic groups without a mask and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think we're, we're definitely getting there a little bit, like really slowly, you know, they're, they're able to do their sports this year. Um, you know, there have been some hiccups, especially in the, the fall season. Um, there were a couple of times the football team had to, had to take a step back and you know so I think that we're getting there slowly but surely so yeah well and it's new to all of us we're all just doing the best we can trying to navigate all this to make the best decisions we can with the information we have so yeah sure challenge um okay so how about so your your school um obviously embraces that addressing the the mental health concerns um fully I would say um, in that you were able to pull off a mini mental health conference uh, this year on Friday. Have you ever done that before? Not, no, we, so um, mental health is a district goal for us and has been for, I want to say three years, maybe only two, um, but it has been one of the um, district goals. And so we do get a lot of support from our superintendent's office. Um, we get a lot of support from the board, the school board, um, when it comes to those types of things. I think so two or three years ago, we did a conference um, offered towards mostly parents, but students were allowed to come if they wanted, but it was mostly geared towards parents. Our plan was to do that every other year, which would have been this year. And we ended up not doing it because we felt that it would be more beneficial in person. Um, and we usually do it in the fall. And so we just decided not to do it this year. Um, and then we did a, um, oh gosh, a black month, uh, Black History Month um, conference in February um, that went really, really well. And so when we were talking about other opportunities, um, our students come to school um, one Friday a month. Um, and so when we were talking about other opportunities that came up to do a mental health conference, um, but offer it directed towards the students. And so, um, yeah, we threw that together and ran with it. And I think a lot of students, um, I think a lot of students embraced it um, and really enjoyed learning some things or um, tools to be successful. What did it look like? Tell me how Friday went. Um, we had, I want to say total, there were 27 different presenters, um, you know, and it was everything from, you know, surviving mental health during a pandemic and, oh, sorry. The announcements are coming on. Um, there was some just about basic anxiety and depression and how to, um, you know, live with that. We had a teacher talk about his specific barriers that he's had, and it was good for them to see an adult that they know um, who's successful with mental health 
talk about that. Um, we had YSS come, we had NAMI come, we had American, American Foundation of Suicide Prevention come, uh, Please Pass the Love was here. We had so many people come. And what's amazing is we really planned it in a pretty short period of time. Um, and the support from the community is just amazing to me because they all came together in such short notice to make this happen for our students. Um, so yeah, it went overall, it went really, really well. And the students, I think really enjoyed it. And I got really positive feedback from the teachers as well. Um, so I think it went pretty well. And so the students got to choose which one to attend and they got to choose two or how did that work? Yeah, so they got to choose two sessions. And so each presenter did um, their session twice. They had a first session and a second session. And so students got to choose for two different sessions out of the 27 sessions. Very cool. And so mm -hmm. and then the part about um, your students only come to school one Friday a month. Yeah, and so with the with everything with COVID, um, things changed this year. Typically, they come Monday through Friday, but this year they have only been coming this semester. They come Monday th through Thursday from 7:50 to 2:35, and then they come one Friday a month. And then every other Friday is considered an intervention day. Um, so something that we're really seeing is um, academic needs in the building. Um, a lot of kids are really struggling um, academically especially those who are doing remote at home. Um, and so they come in uh, typically on Fridays and they get some support from teachers. And what about, are there opportunities for them this summer? through school? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ames High always does um, like a two week summer school period. Um, we also have an online like credit recovery option for them if they're most of the time sophomores, juniors or seniors are eligible for that. Okay, so then um, just because you mentioned it um, when we were talking, when we were getting started here, um, what about the impact on staff? It sounds like you had one staff willing to um, put it all out there and address that um, depression and anxiety that I think you said he was experiencing um, yep. and dealt with, but what would you say about, about staff in general? Yeah, so I know when, so when we left last March for spring break, a year ago in March for spring break, um, I remember very little conversation about this and some teachers being like, oh, we're not going to come back to school. And I was like, whatever, that's never going to happen. And so I was at home with my kids when I found out I wasn't coming back to school. Um, so that was really emotionally devastating. I think not just for me, but for other teachers, you have seniors that, um, you will never get to see again or may never see again. So that was really devastating. And then with that, for me, for example, and I think I can probably speak for a lot of teachers, teachers are different types of people and they really find joy in their work. You don't, you're not a teacher because you make millions of dollars, right? Like you really enjoy working with the kids. And so for me, I have a beautiful family. I have beautiful children. I have a husband who loves me. We have a beautiful home with a beautiful backyard, but all of those things isn't what fill my cup completely. My cup is filled by what I do every day. It's because I'm a social worker. It's because of the students that I work with. And then my family helps top that off. And so I was really finding, um, I was really finding it hard to gain like my full happiness without being able to connect with my students and, and, and I do connect with them, but it wasn't the same, um, to see them every day versus, you know, talking to them over the phone or Skype, you know, once every couple weeks, Skype is Skype even a thing anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Zoom or whatever. Zoom, yep. Yeah, Zoom, you know, Zoom every, you know, and then sometimes they get on and sometimes they don't. And so it was, it was really hard, I think, for me. And I think I can speak for others when we lost that connection with our students. And then even when we came back in the fall, we were only seeing them, you know, twice, twice a week because they were on rotating days. Um, and it was just, it was just a lot. It was, and it was hard this whole year to kind of get your, get your, feet going like you you know we'd get going and then we'd have to back off because the positivity rate got too high and then we'd come back and then you know the schedule was changing and it, it was just it's been really hard to get things going and moving this year for sure kind of lost your groove and it would come and go yeah 
and a bit of your sense of purpose too, especially during the shutdown, it sounds like. Yes. Yeah. It was, it was incredibly difficult. So I, I appreciate you putting it out there and, and putting, being so articulate about, um, about it all. So thank you. Yeah, of course. Is there anything else? Um, if anybody has any questions or comments, I, I am able to see that today. So if you'd like to put that in there, I can relay that to Caitlin. Um, but is there anything else that you, any words of wisdom you would like to pass on to parents? Um, this is a parenting in a pandemic group, but, or, um, or to other schools that might be watching. Yeah. I mean, I think just talking to your kids and helping them understand that they're not the only ones going through this. There are so many kids struggling with this and being supportive. Um, you know, obviously your kids are going to come to you more as a parent if they know that you support them. And if you don't know how to support them, not everybody talks the mental health language. And as a mental health professional, we understand that. Um, but if you don't know what to do or you don't know the next steps, there is a good chance that your school or someone in the community can guide you in the right direction to get that support that you need. Um, so just reach out for help. It's not, it's not a bad thing. It's okay. Um, and there are really a lot of people out there who can help you if you don't know what to do next. Absolutely. Thank you, Caitlin. And thank you for taking yes. so much good care of your um, school community there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, they're, they're pretty great. So they're lucky to have you. Thank you. <laughs> good luck with the rest of your school year. Yeah, thank you. It was nice to talk to you. Take care. Bye.